So to determine symmetry, you have to plug in a negative x. We want to know, does f of negative x equal either f of x, or does f of negative x equal the opposite of f of x? Okay, so we just plug a negative x into our function. So f of negative x, replace all the x's with a negative x. and simplify, and we get negative x squared is just positive x squared, minus x minus 12 over x squared minus four. And the question is, is this exactly the same as what we started with? And it's not because I've changed one sign, okay? This plus sign became a minus. Is this exactly the opposite of what I started with? Did every single sign change? No, so it's not, the, it's not exactly the same, it's not exactly the opposite, so this has neither y-axis nor origin symmetry. And then to calculate the y-intercept, we take f of zero, plug zero in for x, and um, calculate what y is when x is zero, that's the y-intercept. So we have zero squared plus zero minus 12 over zero squared minus four, is negative 12 over negative 4, which is 3. So the y-intercept is 3. Okay, to find x-intercepts, x-intercepts happen when a graph touches the x-axis, like that. And any point on the x-axis has the coordinates x, some x that we don't know, comma, 0. The y-coordinate of any point on the x-axis is 0. So that means I'm going to take my function, replace y with 0, and solve for the x. Okay, so I'm going to have 0 equals x squared plus x minus 12 over x squared minus 4. Now the only way a fraction can equal 0 is if its numerator equals 0. The denominator doesn't matter at all. 0 divided by anything is 0. So I just need to solve where does 0 equal x squared plus x minus 12, and that factors to x plus 4 times x minus 3. Then you set each factor to 0, and you get x equals negative 4 and 3 as the x-intercepts. And then um, for vertical asymptotes, vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is 0. So I set x squared minus 4 equal to 0, you get x squared equals 4, so x is plus or minus 2. So those are our two vertical asymptotes. The equations are x, use comma, okay, x equals 2, comma, x equals negative 2. Those are our two vertical asymptotes. Finding horizontal asymptotes um, involves comparing the degree of the numerator and the denominator, which is 2 in this case. So there's like a little chart. Um, if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, your horizontal asymptote is just x, uh, sorry, y equals zero. Um, if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, your horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of leading coefficients. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so we are in this situation. Both the degree of the numerator and the denominator is 2. The highest power on x is 2 in both. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of leading coefficients, which would be 1 over 1, or just y equals 1. The last step before we graph is to um, just fill in some points. So we want to plot some points between and beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote. 
So let's just remind ourselves the x-intercepts were at negative 4 and 3. And my vertical asymptotes, these are intercepts, and asymptotes, those were at x equals negative 2 and 2. So I want something smaller than negative 4. So I've got a couple of those. Um, something between negative 4 and negative 2, I've got a negative 1. Something between negative 2 and 2, I have 1. And something bigger than 3, 5 and 7. So they gave them to us. We just have to find the y values for these given x values. So I would just use a calculator to plug these x values into the function. And you get these values for y. To choose the correct graph, we need to recall all the information that we've already found. We have vertical asymptotes at x equals plus or minus 2, horizontal at y equals 1, a y-intercept at the point 0, 3, and an x, and x-intercepts at negative 4, 0, and 3, 0. So just a quick glance at A shows no x-intercepts. This graph does not cross the x-axis at all, so we can eliminate A, okay, because it doesn't have these two x-intercepts. Same with B no x-intercepts. So C and D are our only real candidates. I'm going to zoom in. Um, on, on my math lab, you can press this zoom button, or you can press this button that pops out into a new window and makes the graph a lot bigger and easier to look at. Um, but I'm just going to zoom in my program here. So C... Let's see, we are looking for vertical asymptotes at x equals positive 2 and negative 2. Now you might get thrown because this looks like it's at 1, but you have to check the scale. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 tick marks from 0 to 20, which means that the scale is by 2. So these vertical dashed red lines, these are one tick mark from the origin, which means they're actually at 2. So these vertical asymptotes are in the correct place. This horizontal asymptote is halfway between 0 and the first tick mark, which would be at 1 because the tick marks are 2 apart. So we have um, the vertical and horizontal asymptotes in the right place. I have a y-intercept at 3, x-intercepts at negative 4, and 3. Um, so this satisfies all of the pieces that I found so far. I should check my points. So like negative 10 is supposed to be 13 sixteenths. Um, oh, actually, sorry, hold on. Yeah, negative 10 is supposed to be 13 sixteenths, which is close to 1. So negative 10, it's, we're, we, the y value on the blue curve here does look like it's very close to 1. So you could check a few more points. Um, they will all agree this is the graph. Um, so I'm pretty sure that, that C is our, our choice here. But let's, um, let's just look at D real quick and make sure we can eliminate it. Okay, so we think it's C. Um, just zoom in on D and see why this isn't the graph. Okay, right away... I see that the horizontal asymptote looks like it's below the x-axis, which would be um, y equals a negative number. So that is not the correct horizontal asymptote. So I am fairly confident that we have eliminated everything but C. C seems to match all of our criteria.